So I'm Craig Shackleton. I am the head instructor of Ottawa Classical Swordplay, which is an affiliate club of the Hemant Alliance. This is my co-instructor, John, and uh, we're going to be talking about our interpretation of sword and buckler technique from Royal Armouries Manuscript 133, which I like to call the Claris and Vigorous Um I'm doing a brief introduction to these videos so that uh, you can understand uh, what's going on through the rest of them. So first of all, I want to show you the equipment that we generally use for these. Uh, this sword and buckler are two of my favorites, especially for uh, entry-level equipment. This sword is the Alcam Scarf Sword. It's fairly inexpensive, it's very durable, it's got very good flex for safety. I put a little plastic safety tip on the end of it for extra stuff there. This is also the Alchem Buckler, and uh, these are quite inexpensive. They don't necessarily look 100% historically accurate, but they are lovely to work with. Uh, very nice stuff. All right. I also use bucklers made by Missionary Scaler. This is their steel buckler, 11 inches, and this is their wooden buckler, which I also had them do at 11 inches. 11 inches diameter is the size that I absolutely 100% prefer for doing stuff from Claris Lutetis. I also have two other swords that I like to use. The Arms and Armor Scholar Sword, which is specifically designed for use in training with Claris Lutetis and also the Albion 133, which obviously is also intended specifically for use in training these instruments. These ones are much nicer, but more expensive than the Alchem pieces of equipment. So this is the equipment that we use for doing our training. Um, the main strings that we'll be following in our videos are two series. First one will be that we will go through the manuscript page by page and interpret what is seen on in the manuscript on those pages. We'll also be doing a series where we show how I teach the system, so we'll work through in a more modern, organized teaching method. Uh, as far as the manuscript itself goes, uh, there's two translations that I work with. One is Jeffrey Forgang's translation, which is available at some bookstores, although it's becoming scarce. The other one is there's a free translation available on the Wittenauer, which is an online uh, collection of medieval fact books, and uh, it is free and it is a project by various members of the Hemant Alliance. 